everyone. My name is Diego Alfonso and I'm your host with the Florida Aviation Network. We are broadcasting free and in the clear from the Aerospace Discovery in the Florida Air Museum at the Sun and Fun Complex in Lakeland, Florida. During its 43rd annual Sun and Fun Fly-In and Exposition. Today, our guest is the Senior Ma Manager for General Aviation for Jepson. His name is Slim Morgan. Slim, welcome to the program. Thank you much, Diego. Let me tell you, uh, and, and I want to get this out during the, during the segment, because a lot of people don't know the history of Jepson, you know, mm -hmm. w way back. I, I discovered that probably around five years ago, and okay. I think it was a very interesting thing, and I'm going to touch on that towards the end. Okay. However, in the beginning of the show, what I'd like for you to take this opportunity and to address our audience and tell us all those good things that Jepson's been cooking up <laughs> and for the flying community. Okay. So, you have, you own the airways, and this is your time. Sounds good. Well, it, it all goes back to, as you said, the beginnings of Jepson with Captain Jep. Uh, Captain Jep was an uh, aviation pioneer. He was an airline pilot, an airmail pilot, and he was very big into safety. And ultimately, because of his wanting, basically wanting to survive being an airmail pilot, uh, he created the instrument approach chart, uh, the aeronautical charting. He used to do them all by hand. Uh, ended up creating a company, so it started with safety and education. His, his goal was to remain safe and make people the best pilot they could. He wanted to be the best pilot, and that's still the theme of Jepson today. So everything we do is, is built around flight safety, safety of flight, making sure people can fly in instrument or VFR conditions and be safe. And we're also big into training. We, we want to help people become better pilots, help them become pilots to begin with. So everything we do is, is centered around safety, training, and making pilots the best, most efficient we can. Exactly. Now, are there any, uh, I, I think uh, you guys are working on some different things. I have uh, a list here uh, where we, we see wireless mm -hmm. updates on Garmin. On Garmin Pilot? Pilot. So as of uh, last year, we have we reached an agreement with Garmin Pilot that we now have Jepson charts on the Garmin Pilot app, which is the first time we've, we've been on anyone else's app besides ours. So for the, there's a lot of people that like Jepson charts over the government charts, so they can now get that on Garmin Pilot. Uh, at the same time, Garmin introduced the FlightStream 510, which is a means to wirelessly update uh, the charts and the nav data in the GTN uh, 650, 750, and now the uh, G1000 NXI, the latest generation G1000. Uh, that was until yesterday, that was the only one, was the, the um, Garmin charts. Uh, we, we announced yesterday with Garmin that we now, uh, you will be able to wirelessly update Jepson charts and nav data in, through Garmin Pilot. So basically, while you're at home, you update your iPad when you have good Wi-Fi, and then you go to the airplane and the airplane senses, you, there's no cards involved, the airplane senses that there's new data on your iPad and it wireless, wirelessly updates Jepson charts and navigation data into the aircraft and there's no button pushing, it just does it automatically. It asks if you want to update and that's all you have to do. That's great, that's, yeah. a, that's so a great feature. That's a great feature, you don't have to worry about taking cards out, taking them home, loading the cards, putting them back in, forgetting the cards at home, how many people have showed up at the airport and their cards are sitting in the computer at home. So it's, it's nice, all you have to do is update your iPad and then that will update the, the instrumentation in the cockpit with Perfect. Jepson data and, and charting. Now, I also have some uh, notes here on uh, AOPA, mm -hmm. Aviation High School Initiative. Yeah, so AOPA started that uh, November of 2015, actually right here in the, in the museum. Uh, we were one of the uh, founding members of that. So what we found, what AOPA found and, and brought the industry and the community together is there are a lot of aviation high schools, like the one right next door was at the Central Florida yep. Aviation Academy. Um, when we first started when looking, there was, we thought, about 240. By the time the meeting happened in November of 2015, we found there were 450 high schools in America that taught some type of aviation curriculum from one class to a full high school, you right. know, a full curriculum. 
but there was no common theme, there was no common curriculum, there was no place for them to go. And if a school wanted to start something, they, didn't, they couldn't do it. So AOPA started the initiative to pull this community together, starting with the, the bigger uh, um, high schools that already have an established curriculum and helping the other high schools that are trying to start, uh, working to create a common curriculum that a school that wants to start an aviation program can just go get this curriculum and start rather than everyone starting their own different one. Out of the 450 plus high schools, there were probably 440 different curriculum out there. Right. So it's it's just the AOPA is leading the initiative. Jepson, like I said, was a founding member of it. And we're just trying to help bring the, the, the educators, the industry, the training materials together to help. We, we need, a lot of people think about aviation in the college level. With the number of pilots and, and aviation technicians and maintainers and the number of people we need in the industry as we move forward, we need to start working in high school and getting people interested in aviation in high school. And not just pilot, all the different aspects of the aviation industry. Exactly. And the younger, the better. The younger, the better. Because normally by the time people are out of high school, they've, they've narrowed down their choices or picked what they want to do. And if they've never had a chance to be uh, influenced or had a chance to see aviation, then we probably already lost them. Uh, the latest Boeing study, as, as part of Boeing, the latest Boeing study, we need 610,000 new pilots in the next 20 years and about 620,000 new maintainers. We're not going to get that if we wait to talk to people in high school. Exactly. Well, I mean, until college. Until we we college. need to get into high school. we got to get them before that. Absolutely. Or in it in that direction. So a a o p AOPA took the lead on this and pulling the community together. We had another meeting last uh, November, and it's moving forward. The curriculum is yeah. being written, and uh, we're proud to be part of that as much yeah. as we can. AOPA, I mean, AOPA is a tremendous, I hate to use the, the name tool because I yep. don't want to degrade yeah with that name no, but, but it is it, it is it's one of the greatest tools that the aviation community has to keep and promote absolutely aviation they are the the best advocates for general aviation and in the business aviation and jepson's proud to be a strategic partner and and we've been a strategic partner or been a partner of theirs for years this year we stepped up to being a strategic partner and we're proud to be part of yeah uh, what they i do. i personally participated i'm a cfi uh, I personally participate in the Rusty program okay. that they have, mm -hmm. trying to get these people back into, into flying, which is a successful program. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so they always looking forward, always the forefront is safety. Absolutely. But uh, they w also need to get the ball rolling, get everybody involved and, 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 and promote aviation at all levels. And make it enjoyable and, and cost effective. Make it something people can do. Exactly. Now, I think I have another note here uh, that talks about training program updates. Yeah, kind of in line with what we're talking about in AOPA and constantly wanting safe and better training. We're in the process of redoing most of our training materials. Over the years, we've grown and we've, we've done so many different programs that uh, we're, we're taking a fresh look at it. We're, we're going to focus on the big ones, the private pilot, the instrument commercial, the ones we've always been good at. Uh, and we're, we're refocusing on the quality of those. We're bringing them update with the online, the, the new multimedia. Uh, it's going to be available on the iPads. Uh, and we're basically just re, revamping the whole program. And so over the next year to 18 months, you're going to see a lot of um, a lot of new updated training programs and new ways of getting to that online training, media or um, mobile apps, uh, whether you do the paper or whatever. Right. Uh, just giving people as many opportunities and as easy and, and be the best quality out there. Now, yeah. let me ask you this: uh, Is there anything else that you would like to talk about, uh, Jeps, and what is being in the works? Um, I think I think what I can say is it's going to be an exciting year for Jepson. Uh, we we have uh, have new leadership uh, over the last year, year and a half. Uh, we really worked on our culture and we've embraced innovation. And I think in the ne in the coming months, I think the public's going to really like some of the things we come out with. Unfortunately, I can't. That's the b m biggest hint no. I can give you right now. I try, but uh, you <laughs> tried, you tried, but we're we're. Uh, Again, what we want to do is make flying, make help people become better pilots, make it uh, reduce the cost of ownership, which is a big thing. Jep's always been uh, in, in the premier league, and so the price has been up there. So we're doing things to reduce the price, reduce the cost of ownership, and give pilots what they need to be better, safer, 
pilots and have more fun doing it. So in the coming months, we're going to see some big announcements. Perfect. Now, before we leave, before we end the segment, uh, whenever I have a an individual that I interview in which you are specifically talking about a product or mm -hmm. something that you want to the aviation community to know about, I always like to make sure that they understand and they know that the individual that is addressing these issues uh, belongs in that seat. Okay. And what I like to ask you now is why don't you tell us a little bit of your background, especially uh, your flying background okay. as a pilot. Absolutely. If well, you don't mind. It may not look like it, but I've actually been flying for 39 years now. <laughs> uh, I got my license back in 1978 when I was in high school. Uh, so I've been a general aviation pilot since 1978. I went into the Air Force Academy, uh, flew in the Air Force for 26 years, uh, 22 different military aircraft on my records. I flew developmental and operational flight tests. Uh, so I've flown F-15s, F-16s, I've had a chance to fly C-17s, I am you already. <laughs> um, most of my operational time was in KC-135s or EC-135s or yeah. the Gulfstream 5. I retired in 2011 across the peninsula here at McDill Air Force Base where I was the ops group commander running all the operations. And I initially went to Jepson uh, right when I retired. I ran the Department of Defense business for uh, three years. And now I'm in my current position where I'm leading the general aviation business for the Americas, Asia, and Pacific. Uh, I'm a CFII, multi-engine land, single engine land, uh, basically uh, everything except an ATP because I never planned on being a commercial pilot. That was great. There's one thing that I have a bone to pick with Jetson. Okay. And that is they eliminated the books. No, we still got, we still got some because books. Here, well, oh, you mean the charts. The charts. Yep. Because when I was coming up, everybody, I was a private pilot, everybody said, you're instrument writer? No. So my flight bag was big, but it was mm. not big enough for, I bought a book and I put just pages okay. in it. Okay. Because it read Jepson. As long as people saw you with that book, they thought that you were instrument So do you have an iPad, Diego? Yes. Oh, okay, I will hook you up with something that looks just like those books. I'll show you when we get off the okay. air. <laughs> All right. Listen, Slim, it's been real pressure having you here. Uh, unfortunately, we have come to that point where yep. we have to part company. Uh, and we really appreciate all you're doing. Wish you lots of luck with your endeavors. And Jeps will always be there for us. Thank you much, Diego. It's a pr pleasure to be here, and thanks for the opportunity. And for you out there, our audience, whether you're in TV land or cyberspace, my name is Diego Alfonso, and I am signing off with the Florida Aviation Network.